Hello everyone, Bon Yuki here again with another video. And today we're going to be discussing this new purchase that I have. This is the 75 inch TCL R646. And this is a very much maligned television. Um, normally I'm known to be what's called an early adopter. And this time I actually played the waiting game on it. I have reviewed the TCL R635, which is now upstairs. And these two TVs are very similar, um, but they did make some changes. The 646, the biggest thing that they've made, from what I can tell, is they actually fixed the mini LED algorithm. And it actually behaves much, much better than the TCL R635. On the 635, sometimes you would see a black background and you would see anything bright. There would be a blooming around the object. It was, I, I thought it was typical for LCD and I pretty much just left it be. I was like, well, that's what it is. That's what it is. And um, the TV itself, aside from that was fine. The input lag was a little on the higher side. It was around 23 millisecond. So you had a situation where, you know, it's a decent TV. Um, it only had HDMI 2.0 bandwidth. It did support HDMI VRR, which was nice. But you can only do 120 hertz VRR at 1440p. So if you wanted that low input lag down to around 10 millisecond, you wanted to do 1440p at 120 hertz. Or you could do 1080p as well. With this television, it now out of the four inputs, it has two HDMI 2.1s. And now you can do your 4K 120 hertz. And not only do they allow you to have more bandwidth, but they were able to reduce the input lag much further. So in what testing is, you get about 13 to 14 millisecond now at 60 hertz, and you get a very, very low five to six millisecond in 120 hertz. So that's much better now, and it's pretty good. So right now I'm just showcasing uh, Street to Rage 2 for the Sega Mega Drive. And because this TV is so much brighter than last year's model, uh, I believe this one peaks out about 15 to 1600 nits, depending on your picture mode. But, but like I said, because this one is so bright, I can now put on these um, filters that people laud using the Mr. And right now I'm using the Mr. Uh, FPGA, which is right down there. And I'll tell you what settings I have on right now. Basically, uh, I'm running in the 1080p mode because 1440p on this, it does work, but sometimes it loses sync depending on the core. For instance, Sega Genesis works fine, Super Nintendo works fine, Nintendo works fine. But something like Arcade, like uh, CPS2 core, loses sync altogether. So for this demonstration, I'm just going to stick to the 1080p mode. Um, but this is what I use. I use nearest neighbor, uh, scanline 000 with brightness on 50 for the adaptive. Uh, I leave scan filter alone, but then I use CRT simulation for the gamma and I use aperture grill one for the shadow mask. And this looks incredible. Um, I had a buddy come over last night and he was like, this is like a baby OLED. And in a way it kind of is, I mean, right now, I'm looking at the screen of Mr. X's facade, and I, believe me, I looked at this screen hundreds of times on different LCDs, and this is by far the best it's ever seen. Um, the reason why I finally picked up this television is because it was getting decent reviews now, and it had a lot of bugs. That was the reason why I held off on it. This TV came out late last year, and it was maligned, with, like I said, with a lot of issues. It was so bad that Best Buy actually pulled its run off. They pulled it off the shelves, and I don't know if they had a conversation with TCL, but I'm sure that did not rub well with TCL, and they had to go back and fix out the issues that they had. Thankfully, it was all in software, so even people who did own the TV, they didn't have to send it back for a replacement. They just had to wait for these firmware updates, and I could say that after getting this TV on Father's Day, it now works pretty much what I expect it to be. So um, the Google TV stuff is fine. I mean, if you like Google TV, uh, there is an option to not have to use the Google TV, which is great. So you can just turn it off. But uh, me personally, I there's nothing going on in my house that I have to worry about, you know, Google listening in on. I'm not, um, you know, I don't have anything illegal going on. So I'm good with that. But um, 
Yeah, this TV is is very nice. The price when it first came out uh, last year was a whopping seventeen ninety nine, or it might have been eighteen ninety nine. And um, with its contrast ratio being eight thousand one, I thought it was funny. It was like, well, it's an eighteen hundred dollar TV for eighteen thousand contrast ratio. And um, but now, if you were going to buy it now, I picked up this TV from Best Buy on Father's Day, which was a couple days ago. For twelve ninety nine, so it had a five hundred dollar price drop, which is nice. Um, it is more in line with what I paid for my R six thirty five. I think my R six thirty five paid like thirteen fifty or fourteen fifty. So this one's even cheaper than that one that I bought last year. And um, if if you had a choice between the two, some people really really like Roku, but in terms of image quality, this thing blows the doors off the R six thirty five. Like I, I would tell you right now, this scene right here. They would be blooming down where the uh, city is. Like that part would have like a, a little white outline uh, on its sides. Like right here, you'd see like a little, it would get a little lighter. Whereas here, it's just totally, totally black. And the slot masks and everything comes through. You can see it. It makes it have a higher definition when it comes to these scan lines. The TV has pretty decent motion blur. I mean, it's not an OLED. Let's not kid ourselves here. And it's definitely not even close to a CRT or a plasma, but it is very good for LCD. It's one of the things that I it really struck my eye when we were uh, we were uh, playing that uh, Shinobi Three on the Sega Genesis, or you know, the Mr. FPGA on the Genesis Core, and it worked pretty well. So this is a very good TV. The input lag is now low. You can get it at a decent price. Matter of fact, I think it's probably the best price to performance television right now. Um, the 2022 models won't be out for another few months, and when they do, they'll probably be coming out at a premium anyway due to chip shortages and whatnot. So if you have them in the market for a TV, this one's its issues are now gone, thankfully. Um, so it is now a safe purchase. It's just $1,300 for a 75-inch. I don't think you're going to be able to beat that for a long, long time. So if you guys have any questions or comments, um, Please hit me up. I'll try to hit it, help you as much as you can. Uh, for those who want the Roku version, understand it is an HDMI 2.0 television. And basically, you get a lot worse image IQ. Even though they're both mini LED, this one actually feels like a mini LED and what it's supposed to be. This is what I expected out of mini LED when they first announced it. And um, it definitely looks like it. So if you guys want the what want OLED type black, but don't want to deal with burning, here you go. You don't get the motion, but you get pretty close to black, and it looks incredible. Anyway, guys, catch you later.